Not that many years ago, the rearview mirror was one thing, annoying, because there was always glare coming off the car behind you. Boy, things have changed. I'm here with Gentex at CES. Let's see what they've got coming next to a car near you, starting with some adaptive intelligence. First off, here's an example of what they call a hybrid camera monitoring system. What does that mean? What they'll do here is what they call dynamic spotter. The side view cameras show up in the center mirror, but only when there's something there of relevance. It's sensing and making sense of what's around the car. Basically, it's an adaptive visual blind spot monitor that doesn't just tell you've got something in your blind spot, it shows it very clearly. I like this idea because current blind spot monitoring systems give you kind of an irrelevant beeping LED somewhere. Okay, that's great. Now I got to find the mirror and figure out what it wants from me. This is all in one place with lots of context and again, only brings up this image of your side flank when it's relevant and it's already showing it to you. Now another mode they've got is a stitched mode. By stitching any available side cameras with one in the rear, they create a view to the back without the disorienting segmentation of separate views and making every part of the car behind you disappear. We've seen a similar trick before on cars like Cadillac CT6, but stitching in the side cameras is the new wrinkle here. There's basically no need to look anywhere else except forward. Now you might say, okay, wait a minute, what if the power goes out or the software is not right? How do I see what's behind my car? There's still the good old mirror right there. Part of this is regulation. In the U.S., you have to have a centered glass reflective mirror still in the car. The regulators won't allow anything else. But Gentex says they're in no hurry to get rid of the actual reflective glass mirror because it still has benefits in terms of where your eyes actually focus and certain conditions. There are times when you're on a dark, nasty, snowy, wet night when a good old mirror through the back of the car still works pretty well. Now, by the way, those side images we saw in some of these views come from obviously side mirrors. This is one that is a little bit different. The camera is not in a little bulb on the bottom or sticking out the side. It's actually behind the glass. This is kind of like the interrogation room on Law and Order. They're looking through the one-way mirror, right? What they've done here, though, is also make the glass and the housing completely cohesive. Notice there's no gap around here. Because the camera is behind the glass and because the glass isn't moving, this whole thing is starting to get smaller, even though U.S. law still requires a biggish mirror on the side of the car. Until one day we get to regulations allowing one of these, a side wing camera only. But that's not in the cards yet. Okay, lastly, everything these days has to authenticate you, right? But what you do here is the first time you get your car, you enroll your eyes in it. This is just like you might do with Face ID. Now, whenever you glance at it, just like with your iPhone, that's it. It logs you in. What does that mean? It logs you into your preferences. This is not yet a car key or something like that. It could be one day. But right now, it's going to say, OK, I'm going to set the seat where you want it. I'm going to pull up the media choice you like. I might change the cabin lighting the way you like it, because a lot of cars do that. It could do just about any adjustment, including setting your initial drive mode. Maybe you want to start in sport or always start in comfort. Anything the automaker wants to pull that identity into, they can do. And of course, once you've got something like that going on, you open the door to a lot of interesting commerce as well, which I'm always intrigued by. Commerce and media preferences are where you get a lot of other companies saying, oh, interesting, the car is now a place that knows consumers at the individual level. That's a targeting win. And finally, there's smart home integration in the mirror, of course. Now, you all know about HomeLink, where you got these buttons underneath here that are RF, basically garage door transmitters. And that's not going away. It's still pretty robust stuff. But the next thing is called HomeLink Connect, IP-based, right? Where they're going to take this product and say this is also an IP bridge between your smart home products and their whole universe, whether it's smart things or it's Apple, and pull that into this, but not using these buttons. There are too few of those for the richness of smart home. Instead, giving you some kind of a screen display in the car that brings it into an automotive contextual role. You're still controlling your home, but you're not fumbling with your phone trying to do it. As you look at visuals and recognizing the driving task, or you look at smart home integration, or you look at authentication and customization, there's a lot more going on in mirrors than just trying to keep the glare down.